everybody at. It is Pam from Pam's Pat Crafty Corner. It is Wednesday, January 8th, and Happy New Year. This is my first floss tube video since the new year came in. I did Vlogmas all through December, which um, went fairly well. I did it right up until, up to and including, I think, Christmas Eve, and then we went to my parents for um, Christmas Eve night and Christmas Day, and I didn't do any vlogging after that. I just enjoyed my couple days off. I actually went back to work on Christmas night and um, did my round of night shifts and then was off again for New Year's. So I hope everyone had a fabulous Christmas and a really good New Year. We um, we did. We It was nice. It was relaxing. Um, it was busy, but but relaxing. And we got to spend Christmas out at my mom and dad's house with my, um, it was myself, my husband, our kids, our dogs, my sister, my sister's husband, her kids, her dog, my mom, my dad, their dog. Um, it's the first time I think that we've all been together for Christmas, probably if not ever, like since the kids were really, really little. Because my hus my sister's husband works overseas. So a lot of times he's not home for Christmas. And Christmases that he is home, we don't spend tend to spend like actual Christmas with them. Because, you know, they do their own family thing and just appreciate the fact that he's home during Christmas. So it was nice to all have everyone together this year. Um, this is not going to be a whip parade. I'm... I'm sure everyone is uh, whip paraded out now. Uh, everybody is uploading lovely whip parades. I've watched several myself, um, which are nice, but I just don't have it in me to dig out all of my whips and all of my full coverage pieces and go through them. Um, I figure that's just going to depress me because <laughs> I'm not working on them enough. And uh, yeah, we're not going to go there. I do have some plans for 2020, and I will get into that, but um, I figured what I would do is just show you what I've worked on since I finished Vlogmas, uh, or Flossmas, whichever way you want to pronounce that or say that, and I will show you what I've worked on since then and give you a little bit of insight into what my upcoming plans are for um, at least the next couple of months. So grab a drink, grab your stitching and let's get to it shall we so I did have two small Christmas finishes um, which I did show I think during my Flossmas videos but I will show them again just because I actually finished something and that's a rarity in this house but um, I finished my Mill Hill bead kit um, the clock shop this is part of their Christmas village series and um, I got this finished just before Christmas. Look at all the beads. You can see it if I tip it a little bit. There's even cute little beads up here for the little top of the wreaths. Um, the little bows on the wreaths. So I got that one finished. I'm doing as many in this series as I can because I want to do a Christmas, an actual Christmas village with these and just have them you know, all along a um, either my shelf or my coffee table every year. So that's the clock shop. I also have the theater, the hardware store, um, the theater, the hardware store. Seems to me there's another one. And then this year for Christmas, I managed to get the needlework shop. And I also got the Train Depot. So these will be new ones that I will start during Christmas this year coming. Um, I guess during Flossmas next year. And we'll see what we can get done on those. So that's that. I also um, had a little start and finish with this piece. 
This was out of a Just Cross Stitch magazine, I believe, from, I want to say, 96 or 94. It's called uh, Little Log Cabin, I believe. And I just quickly based it around a piece of fabric so the edges wouldn't fray and stitch that up. And my plan is to finish this into a little pillow of some sort. So that's what I'll be doing with that. A little satin stitched heart. It is um, about 1.30 in the day here which normally my dining room has lots of light, but we're calling for more snow today. So it's really dark and dreary out. So there's not a whole lot of um, light. I have my big dining room light on, which is just probably going to cast a shadow over everything, but that's it. I also got some of these peels for Christmas. I had these, um, I ordered them in for my stocking and they came with clips as well. So, you know, the peels for um, they're meant, what these are meant for, in case anyone is wondering, these are actually meant for thread spools. So for anyone who sews and you don't want your spool of thread to unwind when you're done with it, these are little silicone things that go around your thread spool to keep your spool from unwinding. I think that's their original intent of what they were manufactured for. And these little clips that came with the set that I got um, are for your bobbins, for your sewing bobbins. They clamp on around the bobbin to hold the bobbin and keep your bobbin from unwinding. So I did order some of these because um, when I was having my neck and shoulder issues last year, I stopped using my stand um, and stitching with two hands because I found I was leaning forward a lot with my stand and when I was dealing with my neck issues I was using a heating pad a lot and um, after going to the massage therapist and doing some physio and I was sitting back in my chair more kind of leaned back so I started using my hoop again holding a hoop in my hand and stitching that way and believe it or not it's done wonders for my neck um, so I have been stitching a little bit in hand and a little bit using just a regular old hoop for the last couple of months and my neck is much better, my shoulder is much better. Um, so the peels help because I've been holding my fabric with these on my hoop like so. I've been rolling up my fabric and just putting the peels on the edges to hold it. So when I'm stitching, I'm just holding it like this and I can sit back in my chair and stitch away and it's not bothering me. The other thing I got for Christmas was I got a brand new tablet. Um, my phone is an Android phone and I do have a tablet, but it's an iPad. And it's a little bit of a um, splurge. Um, but I had been looking at this new app that's out called Pattern Keeper and I downloaded it to my phone, the trial version of it, to just see what it was like because I stitch so many full coverage pieces that I figured it would help and I don't like to, when I work on my full coverage pieces, I don't really park anymore. I do park but I don't stitch in 10 by 10 blocks and park as I go. I stitch color by color, page by page. So I'll start with one color on a page and stitch that color until that's done on that page. Then I'll pick another color and stitch that color cross country on that page. And the only place I'm parking is where that color, if I get to the bottom of the page and I still have a fair bit of thread left. If that color continues on to the next page, I'll park it where I need it next for the next page. So what I was doing with my paper charts is taking a yellow highlighter and highlighting all the instances of the color I was using on my paper copy so that I could see clearly where I had to stitch. And then I would stitch and cross it off with a darker highlighter as I was going so I knew where I had stitched so I wouldn't lose my place. With Pattern Keeper, 
I can search a symbol. It shows me everywhere on the entire chart that that symbol shows up. I can stitch that symbol anywhere on that page that I'm doing. I can mark the thread as part. I can mark off the color as I'm going. And I don't have to waste time searching for these symbols anymore. So I have found that it has sped up my stitching a lot. Not necessarily the actual speed that, that I'm stitching. What it's doing is it's taking away all of the guesswork and all of the time that it takes me looking for where the next stitch needs to go and crossing it off when I'm done. Like it's, that has sped up my stitching. So if I've only got an hour to stitch, um, I'm not wasting half of it looking for where the next stitch has to go or where it needs to get marked off on the chart or I don't need to search anymore for things. It's all done automatically in this app, which is phenomenal. So uh, for Christmas, I splurged and the only real thing that I really asked for for Christmas was a new tablet an Android based tablet because Pattern Keeper is only available on Android at the moment. I don't know when, if ever, it will be uh, become an Apple, like an, uh, an iStore app. Um, so for the time being, it's only an Android app. So I got a very inexpensive tablet. It was less than $100. And I just bought it specifically for my stitching. So I'm still using my iPad for watching floss tube videos and all that. But the Pattern Keeper um, is running on that um, little RCA 10-inch tablet that I bought. And it's phenomenal. So that was my Christmas. Um, during Christmas, the first piece that I was working on, so we'll get started there, was I had pulled out my... Hang on. I had pulled out, I've got my little needle minder attached here. I had pulled out a Christmas Carol by Heaven and Earth Designs. Now I haven't worked on this since last Christmas. It's part of my Christmas stitching that I do every year. And this is where it is. Ta-da! So there's quite a lot of detail in this piece and I absolutely love this piece. This page here, I started Christmas Day. And I only worked on that for a few days and you can already see, hang on, let me get it closer. You can already see that I've gotten a lot of stitching done. This is all filled in up here. I started filling in this because this is the page break here as you can see from the other pages. So I've gotten all of that done from I started it Christmas Day and I worked on it until New Year's Eve. So what's that? Five days? I worked on that. And I got a nice bit done. And this is 25 count one over one so the stitching is quite tiny so there are there's a lot of lot of little teeny tiny stitches in there so like i was saying the only spot that i'm oh it's not going to focus now the only spot that i'm actually parking as you can see is when i get to the bottom of the page all this thread here for example was coming across from here and it will continue into this page so that's parked and these ones are parked for when I go to pick up the next page down here. So that is A Christmas Carol by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I still have lots to do as you can see but I'm not in a rush to get this piece done. There is no deadline for it. I'm just enjoying working on it when I have the opportunity. And I like working on it at Christmas time. So I'll continue to do that going into next year. Um, for 
2020, my main focus for my stitching is going to be two pieces. Because as you know, like I said, I have a lot of large pieces I work on. The first one is going to be Folk Witch by Gecko Rouge that I'm working on for Jay. The lovely Jay. And this, I won't unroll it now. Um, if you've been following me on Instagram, you would have seen it. Or I'll insert a picture of how much I've gotten done at this point. But I'm at the last bit of these, uh, this page here on the end. So I'm gonna try and get that finished and get that all filled in. Now this was a paper chart. I had the, I had the uh, paper copy that comes with the kit. Um, Gecko Rouge, for anyone who has a Gecko Rouge, if you want to use Pattern Keeper or if you want to use some other app on a tablet in order to mark off your chart, you can, if you have your invoice number and you know, um, like you have proof that you purchased their kit, you can actually go on their website and purchase the PDF backup chart to your kit chart. And Pattern Keeper will read that. So that's what I did. I contacted Gecko Rouge and um, about this kit that Jay had purchased. And I they gave me a link and I went in. Although you wouldn't need to do you don't need to do a link. Um, the it's on their website. You can just go. So they just emailed me the link because I I emailed and asked them a question about it, but. You just go on the link, you just go to their website and you pick the PDF backup copy and it will ask you for the invoice number from when you bought your kit. And they will then email you the PDF backup copy. So I now have this on PDF and I've uploaded it to Pattern Keeper. It looks fabulous. It's working fine. It shows, I, mar I took the time and marked off all of the stitching I already have done. And I'm a little over 40% complete on this chart. I want to finish this by the end of 2020. That is my goal. If I can get it done before that, great. But I want this done this year. So I'm changing my rotation a little bit. Before, my rotation was like an eight-day rotation. So four, I, I, and it was based around my work schedule. So I work four days on and four days off. So what I was doing, my four days um, off, I would pick up a piece on my first day off and work right through until my next four days off, I would pick up my next piece and work on that. So it was a little more than a week. Because I really want to focus on this piece and get it done, I've decided that my four days off, I will work on Folk Witch. My four days that I'm working, the couple hours that I can manage to squeeze in to stitch here or there, I will work on something else. Um, for the time being, that something else is going to be my Tapestry Sampler by Pat Rogers. So I want to pull out some of my smaller pieces to get them done. I did pull this out to work on this this week. And this is where I am right here. So this is a uh, Pat Rogers tapestry sampler. And I managed on the two days I worked on this this week, I managed to get the B done. <laughs> so now I'm on my days off at the moment. So I'm currently working on folk witch right now. When I go back to work on Friday, I'll pick this back up again and probably start with some more of the floral border here at the top. because it would be nice to get this finished this year as well. So there you go. This one I'm stitching on an old piece of 18 count, I think it's oatmeal Ada that I had in my stash. As a matter of fact, there was an old Santa ornament I had started on it, but that's not, as you can tell, it's not in the way of the chart. I'll be able to, you know, I'll be able to frame it without him being in the way. So, yeah, there we go. 
So I want to get this one done. So I will be working on that the next couple of weeks until I get, I don't know, tired of it. And then I will pick up something else to work on on my days that I'm working. Because I'd like to get some more work on a couple of my other full coverage pieces as well, but I'm not setting any hard goals on those. The other thing that I'm going to continue to work on every Friday, irregardless of whether it's a day off or a day, excuse me, that I'm working, is going to be my Long Dog Sampler Death by Cross Stitch. We've all seen it. We all love it. I'm doing this one over one on 25 count and I'm stitching it with DMC 939 and this is where I am now. Oh, it does look blue today, I think, instead of black. Depending on the lighting, sometimes the 939 looks black and sometimes it actually looks navy blue, but it is navy. So here we go. So this week when I picked it up on Friday, I did everything that's to the right side of this um, motif here. And I got that done on Friday, which wasn't bad considering I worked Friday. So that was a nice little bit of stitching I got done before I went to work. So there we go. So that's my death by cross stitch. Um, it's coming along. I would really like to get this one finished as well. Um, I have another piece that's um, very motif oriented, the Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles that I would love to get back to as well. But I'm kind of determined to spend my Fridays for Friday off the grid um, working on this piece. And when this is done, probably go back to my um, Big Red Ship of Life. Unless I get really sick of working on this. We'll see how it goes. So right now, that is it for my cross stitch. That is, much, is as much as I have done. Um, I don't really have any huge plans for 2020. No major goals. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. The only major goal I have is to get my, um, is to get Folk Witch done. Like, I really, really want to focus and have that finished this year. Um, and then if I can finish a couple of these smaller pieces, like the Tapestry Sampler, um, I have that, uh, the whale that I'm doing from Owl Forest Embroidery, um, like I do have some, I call, they're smaller than my full coverage pieces. They're not smalls, but they're smaller than my full coverage pieces. So I have some pieces like that that I would like to work on throughout the year. But my main focus is going to be Folk Witch and trying to get as much done with that as humanly possible. So that's going to be it for my cross stitch talk, I think, for the time being. Let's switch and talk to, about some knitting and some other crafting. So during December, I had a couple of projects that I was working on other than my cross stitch. Um, one of the guys at work, he and his fiance are expecting their first baby girl. And so in the month of December, I crocheted them a rainbow ripple blanket for their baby girl. I'll insert a picture of that here. And I also stitched a second one of those for one of the ladies who works with me on my team. They are expecting their first grandbaby. So I stitched a, a second rainbow ripple blanket for her daughter's baby shower. And then I also finished up a, I started and finished a little fireman's um, diaper cover set for the same couple um, for their baby. So it's like the little diaper cover with the suspenders, little rubber boots, little firefighter boots, and a fireman's hat. And um, yeah, I stitched that up and gave that to them um, for their baby shower as well. Um, 
the lady at work had actually asked me if I could do it and I said yes no problem stitched it up and gave it to her and she was thrilled with it so I was very happy and I was really happy with how it turned out so I'll insert some pictures of that as well if I haven't already so that was my crafting for December lots of stitching lots of crochet I put down on my knitting projects because of that so in December I didn't really do any knitting but I have a couple projects that I want to get finished because I found oh, I found a project that I really want to start like I'm itching to start it but I'm not gonna start it until these are done so bombed yarns I had gotten some lovely yarn from them as a gift from Allie when I was over there and it's this lovely lovely um, purple lavender kind of purple color and it's it's a little bit um, how do I get that to focus on that I don't know we'll see there we go it's like lighter and darker in some areas really really nice yarn and it's so soft and it's so squishy like it's really really nice yarn so um i had two skeins of this and the yardage that was on it i don't know if i had two skeins or one skein i can't remember anyway two skeins It was 100 grams, 350 meters. There's the card. That's the company, Bombed Yarns. They are in Tasmania, Australia. And I decided I was going to do the Natalo cowl. Because it has these ripples in it. It's really pretty, really lovely. And it's a cowl. So it goes around... And it kind of fans out this way with these ripples in it really really nice so the cowl was supposed to be done in a worsted which I figured was going to be too heavy and thick anyway and this is almost like a DK but not quite it's a fingering weight but it's a heavier fingering weight so I said, well, I'll knit it with the yarn held two together because that would give me a closer to a worsted or a heavy DK weight. And I'm really happy I did because the this is super, super squishy. Like, oh my gosh, it feels so nice. Okay. So although I'm knitting it this way, right? It gets, this is the one edge here, it gets wrapped around your neck this way, okay? But I'm running out of yarn, so I'm playing yarn chicken. Julia, on her last video, Julici Julicious, talked about playing yarn chicken and losing. <sighs> I think I'm playing yarn chicken and I'm losing. So, I have two balls. And this is how tiny they are getting. This one's a little bit smaller than this one. I don't know if that's because I wound it tighter. But they're about the same weight. This is what I've got left. And I don't think, I don't know if I'm going to have enough to finish this. Um... I was really hoping to because the fabric it's creating is so, it is so thick and squishy and so nice. Um, really, really knits up really lovely. And I really don't want to have to rip it out. Um, and because it's knit this way, like I can't really add another color because it's going to, you know what I mean? Like then you're going to have this other color just on the end. And I don't, I'm not going to like the look of that. I know I won't personally. I just, I won't. Um, and it has to be enough that I can get it to join in the back and still have this nice piece to hang. 
without this being too tight. It's supposed to roll at the top and just kind of drape like that. And then this is supposed to hang down across. If I don't have enough, if I don't have enough, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this out and I have seen it done online with a lighter weight wool and I may just knit it single ply and maybe go down a needle size so the fabric will still be a little bit dense but um, the only thing that that's going to do is because it's a little bit structured that could affect um, it could affect how it hangs or how it you know sits on the body right not so much this section more it's more about the structure of the upper section because you don't want it to just like flop it doesn't you you it has to have a little bit of structure so we're going to see how it goes and if it was knit this way I could have done like double up here and then singled it for the rest but it's not knit that way it's knit this way so and as a fairly new knitter I'm not confident enough to anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit a row I'm going to weigh my yarn knit a row weigh my yarn again and see how much yarn it takes for me to get a row and try and calculate if I've got enough and if I don't have enough, I might rip it out. We'll see. My other option, if I wanted to keep it thick and squishy, is to get something similar that I could hold with it. So this could be one ball, and the other yarn could be my second ball to mix with it. Like maybe a darker purple or a gray or like a smoky gray um, or a darker gray. Maybe a darker gray with that lavender would look nice. I don't know. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Right now this is te it's temporarily in timeout until I can wrap my head around picking it back up. This was also a lovely bag, drawstring bag that was made by Bombed Yarns as well. With the measuring tape drawstring so lovely okay next project is my oh I okay I stopped right in the middle of a row so next project is my everyday shawl which was previously called the yoga shawl by Andrea Andrea Maori Drea Renee Ritt knits oh, I can't even speak today this is what the end of the wrap looks like. It's a big chevron border. It's all stockinette stitch for the rest of it with garter on the edge, the garter edge. And then the chevron border repeats on the other end. And it's meant to be worn. It buttons up, there's buttonholes in it. And you can wear it several different ways. You can wear it as a wrap, you can wear it as a big, huge scarf. You can wear it as a poncho buttoned up. You can wear it with the buttons down the front, the buttons down over the side. Um, she's got a, a whole YouTube video just on the different ways that you can wear this. It can be worn like a little bolero jacket. So it comes over this way and then buttons in the back behind you. Um, it is lovely. This was the piece that I started last year. I didn't like how it was knitting up. I didn't like the feel of the fabric. It felt too flimsy. I ripped it out and started holding my yarn double and it is gorgeous. I'm really enjoying this knit. And I am down to, as you can see, this much of the bottom chevron. So I'm gonna keep knitting till I get this finished and then I'm going to see about starting my next project, but I am not starting anything until I have this done. And this is a big piece, so, but it's getting there. I'm almost finished. I've been taking this to work now in the evenings so that when I have some quiet time at work, I can pick it up and work on that. 
And other than that, for mindless knitting, like when I was out at the hospital with my mom today, she had to get x-rays and go see the rheumatologist. I have plain old vanilla sock started toe up that I'm working on. So I'm just knitting this toe up. It's with um, some self-striping yarn. And I'm just going to keep knitting till I get to the point where I need to start the heel. And we'll go from there. And I don't know if I'll do the heel as I'm going or if I'll, um, or if I'll do an afterthought heel. I haven't figured that out yet. So there you go. So I'm going to show you the project that I want to start knitting that I'm going to start after my shawl. I'll have to insert pictures. So for Christmas, I got the um, Angela Lansbury Murder, She Wrote entire series on DVD. There's like a 12 DVD box set um, with all the episodes. I am in my glee. So what did I do New Year's Day? I sat down and I cross-stitched and I watched Murder, She Wrote all day in my pajamas and cooked supper. And that was fabulous. It was a great way to kick off the new year. So I got it in my head that I want to knit Jessica Fletcher's sweater, her fish sweater to be exact. So here's a picture of the famous fish sweater, the fish cardigan. It's actually a pattern from 19, I don't even know when. It's an old Mary Maxim pattern. I found it in the vintage Mary Maxim um, charts online. I think I paid, I don't know if it was $1.99 or 99 cents for the pattern. It's a men's cardigan. So it's a small, it's the, the smallest size is like a large women's. Um, or extra large women's and then or small men's and then it goes up to some larger sizes for men and you can either put a button band in or you can um, put a zipper in it so I want to knit that it's a graft it's a graft chart so you would knit it like you would knit like the um, you know graft mittens that have like the snowflake patterns and stuff in them I know I can do that because I've already I've got one half of a pair of mittens done downstairs. I know how to read the graph. I've looked at the, the graph. I think I can wrap my head around it. So that's the next thing I want to teach myself how to do. And yes, it's a huge undertaking. I've only knit one cardigan before, and that was a very easily read pattern. No graphs or charts involved. Uh, the, the pattern was all written out and the sweater was knit all as one piece. You split for your sleeves. You finished knitting the vest portion. And then you went back and picked up your stitches for your sleeves and knit those. And picked up the stitches and knit those for that sleeve. And then you went back and picked up your stitches and knit on the shawl collar. There was no sewing the sweater together after it was done. So this sweater that I'm talking about now, this cardigan, the Mary Maxim one, is knit in the style of a couch and sweater, um, which is an indigenous sweater. Uh, couch and sweaters use a lot of heavy grab symbols, um, fish, salmon, um, bear paws, moose. Um, you can get them with totem poles on. Um, and they're what they are typically knit in wool and they're knit uh, the bodice and everything is knit as one piece not in the round but it's knit as one piece with a split and uh, the sleeves are actually knit onto the sweater as well but the Mary Maxim charts look like a couch and sweater they have the graph work same as a couch and sweater. However, they're knit as a back panel, two front panels, and then you knit your two sleeves and you sew it together afterwards. So we're going to see if I can do it. We're going to give it a whirl, but not until I finish that 
I have to finish this first, this big shawl that I'm doing because I'm not starting anything else till that's done. I've resigned myself to the fact that no, that has to be finished first. So there you go. That's my plans. I hope everyone's having a fabulous day. This is a really long video for me. Um, but that's pretty typical with the first one for the year. And I hope to do some updates maybe every couple of weeks. Let you know how I'm making out with Folk Witch. And let you know how I'm doing with my other pieces. And show you my progress. If you want to follow my progress on a daily basis, you can follow my Instagram at Pam's Crafty Corner. Um, you can like this video and subscribe to this uh, channel and you will get to see all of my updates here on YouTube. And that's about it. I hope everyone's having a fabulous start to the new year. Um, stay safe wherever you are. If you are in an area where there's a lot of snow, which we have to be getting at the moment, stay safe. Um, my thoughts and my prayers are with all of our friends in Australia at the moment who are having a very difficult time with all of the fires there. Um, I've been in contact with Allie. Um, she's safe. Everything's fine with her so far, but it is a record, record breaking year in all of the worst ways possible. Um, when it comes to the fire situation in Australia this year. So I know there are several people with charts out at the moment that you can purchase that are donating to fire relief. I know Red Cross has a huge um, page set up, I guess, for donations there. Um, there are several different um, ways that you can help out, even if you're not in that country there are things that you can do there are also uh, places that are looking for um, there, they were there was a call out I know for mittens for koalas uh, that had been burned during the fires but I think they're moved away from that now and they're looking more for pouches a lot of the animals down there are marsupials so they have their babies and carry them in pouches and they're looking for pouches to mimic um, mom pouches for wombats, uh, kangaroo joeys, um, some other kind of, is it possums? I can't remember. There's a bunch of them. And there's actually a couple of different posts that I've seen on Facebook that talk about uh, these pouches and have the actual instructions on how to sew them or make them. They're very specific in how they want them made, but if anyone has any sewing skills, it will be certainly um, something that you could do to help out with the efforts there. Okay, that said, I'm out of here. I'm going to go relax and grab stitching and try and enjoy the rest of my day off and stay warm and cozy while it is now snowing outside. So you have a great day, and we'll see you again in a couple weeks. Bye. <music>